Hi, welcome to another video. Mountain Dew here. Today on the channel, we'll be making Billy Cheese Steak sandwiches in a Dakota fire pit. Stick around. So I'm going to try making a Dakota fire pit today. I've never done it. I've dug a lot of holes in my life. So how hard can it be? In doing the research for understanding how they work, because ideally what you're looking for with a Dakota fire pit, from my understanding, and you all correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't want the flame to illuminate in the forest and obviously you don't want any smoke. The principle behind the Dakota fire pit is that it uses convection, indirect heat, and you have a draw, a fresh air intake. And I read quite a bit of information about it with different diagrams and I think what I'm going to try to do today We've got probably a 20 mile an hour wind, so your fresh air intake probably doesn't need to be that big. But sometimes it's easier to dig a bigger hole than it is a smaller hole. So I'm going to go with the 10-10-10 rule, and that is my fire pit's going to be 10 inches deep. My fresh air intake is going to be 10 inches away from the fire pit. And then my fresh air intake is going to be somewhere between 8 and 10 inches in diameter on about a 30 degree angle facing the direction of the wind. So that's the theory behind it and I found an elevation and I think it's going to work. So I'm going to start digging. So I took advantage of this fallen tree right here and instead of trying to borrow a hole what I did is I just made a trench. I went under the tree and I dug me a pit about probably 12 by 12 and then there's a little bit of a slope to that so it's going downhill because ideally I want the wind to go underneath my bed of coals because I'm going to put some sticks down there maybe a rock So now let me show you what I'm going to do next to kind of create a tunnel. This took about 30 minutes to do this because there was quite a few rocks like that and quite a few roots. So let me show you what we're going to do next. So what I did is I made a little ledge right here on either side of my tunnel hole and I found me a log so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close up this void by placing these logs and it's okay if you have gaps Because now what we're going to do is take these pine boughs Like I said, I've seen people try to do this by taking a long limb and trying to bore the hole out. And seems like a lot of frustration to me. Okay, after we got
pine boughs on You don't want leaves, you want dirt. Because the dirt's what's going to keep the air from escaping. That should be good. Now Mountain Dew has gathered up a bunch of dry wood and it's super important, this is the most important part of doing a stealth fire is you have to make sure that your wood is dry. So my advice is do not try to do this if the woods are wet. You're better off trying to find a better place to make a fire that's concealed. And you can see these pine boughs right here, they're going to start smoking on me when they dry out. So I need to break all those off and push them out of the way. This is the first time I've done this, I'm not sure how it's going to work. The success of course is can I see any smoke and can I see any flame? And if the answer to those two questions is no, then you my friend have successfully made a Dakota pit fire. That's the reason behind this. It's, it's all about stealth. Okay, so now we're going to start placing some of our dry wood. All right, finally. So we came up here this morning. This is way out of the way or the trail of where we're used to hiking and camping. But we thought what we would do was come up here 
and see if there was any flat spots, but it doesn't appear to be. We could probably create some flat spots, but I like it up here because there's water about 100 yards from here. And it's super secluded. So I think we're going to make this a new home base. I think this is going to be our new location. I may come up here and do some work on it. But in about two to three weeks, I'm going to come up here with some seed potatoes. Go to the feed and seed store and get me a five or ten pound bag of seed potatoes. I got a funny story about seed potatoes. When I was in college, we moved to the Panhandle of Florida and I went to school in a real small community and it was sort of a farming town. A lot of cotton, tobacco, peanuts, corn. And my neighbor across the street, old Grady, I'll never forget Grady. He was a farmer. And I had went and got a book. I forget the guy's name, but the, the name of the book is called The Joy of Gardening. And I'll uh, annotate the author's name. He's very famous. And he has a concept about gardening called raised beds. So I went to the library and I checked out this book and I read the book from cover to cover. Decided I was going to go rent a, a rototiller. And in the panhandle of Florida, that soil is as dark and rich and beautiful. I mean, talk about black dirt. I had about an acre of land and I said, I'm going to turn the whole backyard into a garden. So I started researching how many different varieties of beans and peas and radishes and carrots and cucumbers and squash and you name it. I bet I had probably 50 or 60 things in this garden. Cantaloupe, I had a couple fruit trees out there. They always seem to do good. But I wasn't much of a gardener. I'd never had one. I never tried it before. And like I said, it was a country town, so you didn't go and order your seeds offline or you went to the store. There's a feed and seed store. So I go in there and I start picking out all my seeds and I'm hunting and hunting and hunting and I can't find any potato seeds. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find not a single potato seed and I'm finally the old woman she comes around the corner and she looks at me and, and she can tell I'm a student and she says can I help you son I said yes ma'am I said I'm looking for potato seeds she said oh okay how many do you want I thought that was a rather odd question because I didn't know how to answer it. How many seeds do I want? I said, well, I'm not really sure. Uh, what do they come in? She said, they come in 5 and 10 and 20 pound bags. And I thought, oh my God, that's a lot of potato seeds. <laughs> and I didn't want to embarrass myself. So I said, thinking to myself, you know, Maybe I had to go with the smallest quantity. I said, well, I better probably do a, a five pound bag of seeds because I don't have that big a garden. And I'm sure that uh, that'll be plenty. And she goes, okay, I'll be right back. So I had all my little packages of seeds on the counter. And she comes around the back room and she's got a big old bag of potatoes in her hand. <laughs> I looked at her and I said, I said, ma'am, maybe I didn't communicate this correctly, and maybe I didn't explain myself. I said, I don't need potatoes. I need potato seeds. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, you know, my dad used to tell me, you know what, son? We'd dress you up, we'd buy you books, and you'd get on the wrong bus. But, at any rate... Uh, she quickly educated me over what potato seeds are. So I went home and 
and cut all the little eyes off the potatoes and you, you put the eye down in the dirt. I was anxious. Every morning I'd go out there with my cup of coffee before school started and I'd go out there and water my garden and weed it and just have a great time. That was the most awesome garden I've ever had in my life. I mean, it was just, it was just amazing that thing worked. And old Grady, he'd come over and he'd spit his chaw out and he'd look at me and he goes, I don't think you know what you're doing. I said, no, I don't, Grady. I said, I didn't even know what potato seeds were. <laughs> and uh, you want to talk about a bumper crop. We ate out of that garden all year long. And we'd get those little new potatoes, little red potatoes. That's what she gave me. And I bet we had, I don't know how many pounds of potatoes we had. We had potatoes coming out of our ears. And every day I'd sneak home for lunch and I'd stop by the grocery store and get me a gallon of peanut oil. And you can use that peanut oil over and over if you don't burn it. It's kind of expensive, but man, was it good. But I'd come home for lunch and I'd take a cast iron skillet and I'd fill that thing up about halfway with that peanut oil and I'd put that thing on the stove and slice up them new potatoes. And I had onions and scallions and that's how I ate. Fried potatoes and onions and go out there. I bet I had 80 or 90 tomato plants and slice up the tomatoes and put them in the bowl with uh, vinegar and oil and uh, cucumbers and a little bit of onion in it and a tomato sandwich. So we're going to do a rogue garden up here. I'm going to come up here with a five pound bag of potato seeds and I'm going to throw some potatoes out here and see what they do. Well, our coals are almost ready, probably another 20 minutes. We'll let that flame die down. And we've got a grate. We're going to put the grate over that hole. And Mountain Dew is going to take it from here. <laughs> 